Hello, this is Sacred Word Publishing, and this is Justin Garcia narrating. Today is our third video in our four-part series of Daniel's Ten-Horned Beast. Today we will be covering Revelation 12, along with Daniel chapter 8, and we will be identifying some very unique portions of this scripture tomorrow. But today I want to read, like we did yesterday, of a divided chapter of each one of these chapters Revelation 12 and Daniel 8 I have taken each sentence <clears throat> and ordered them chronologically and if you read it you can note that the sequence will always repeat because the prophet will receive the vision and then they will receive insight from an angel from the Lord and the insight will follow chronologically with what had happened above so what I've done is just copied and pasted to keep the chronology but make it as one flowing chapter rather than being encoded like it was passed down to us and it was meant to be encoded and passed down to us and it was meant to be rightly divided so I pray Father, in Yahushua's name, that we have rightly divided and that you will test our hearts and that we can edify one another and test one another and see the truth in your word. And we pray that your word will speak to us and that your Holy Spirit will guide us to truth and understanding. And we pray all these things in Yahushua's name. Amen. So today we will be going over Daniel 8 and Revelation 12 and we know Revelation 12 and 8 from the first day we read the whole chapter and it talks all about this beasts and these beasts are very very relevant to the end times and the end times if you've been following along in our studies is right now so I pray that we can have discernment in this and Prepare our households with meat in due season. So when our Father comes, He'll say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. And He'll put us in charge over our things. He'll say, You've been faithful over few. Behold, I put you in charge of many. Praise God for that promise. So we will go over the beast and we're focusing specifically on the ten horns and here we can see that the ten horns represent ten kings and it's spoken of specifically in Daniel 7 Revelation 12 13 and 17 and here's a list from blueletterbible.com I just typed in ten horns in the search bar and it populated every scripture in the Old and New Testament that talks about the ten horns. I, I also want to bring up Daniel 2 though because Daniel 2 also relates to the ten horns when it talks of the toes of iron mixed with miry clay. Right? Because that is very relevant to the end times ten horn kingdom. So let's Go ahead and get into it. Remember horn literally just means a horn or a flask or a musical instrument, maybe rays of light. But remember on day one we looked and it can it literally represents king, as we saw in prophecy. Now we've seen the four beasts, and we're specifically focused on the fourth beast. and here's a great picture I encourage you to pause and check these out if you want to I'm just providing them for reference I do not want to impose my opinion on anyone I want to let the word speak for itself but we should also look into the history and the truth of the current events that are surrounding us and try to understand what exactly it is that it is in, in control of the evil 
that is rampant across the world with all these wars people still have not found love in their heart after all these millennia of seeking I pray that we can find love in our heart and that we will stand for that love even in the face of death because we will be rewarded for our devotion to love and God is love so here we see a map of the division of Rome it went into the Western Empire and the Eastern Empire in the Western Empire we see ended up being headed by the Vatican and the Eastern Empire ended up being headed by Constantinople which is modern-day Istanbul and Istanbul was the head of the Ottoman Empire which fell in around 1922 to the European forces after World War I and here we can see the different mandates that were handed out after the World War and it all follows the same exact area of war today where all of these people still are we see ISIS occupied by the YPG, different militant groups under the Assad control, the Russians, uh, Americans obviously, who are there now, and then different Kurdish forces who have moved in from Iraq. I mean, th there's 23 nations gathered here today, according to Nikki Haley. I'm quoting her from a brief that she gave last week. There are 23 nations gathered here today for a war. That's a lot of nations. And what's really crazy about it is that it was prophesied over 2,000 years ago that this would be the seat of this gigantic war. And really, there's not much there unless you believe in the Bible and you believe in the Word of God and you believe that this is the promised land. This is where Gog, the little horn, the anti-messiah, the false messiah, who will lead away the whole world, who's not written in the book of life and sealed by the word of God, Yahushua, the messiah. So what I want to do is go ahead and get in. Today I went through Revelation 12 and Daniel 8 and we're gonna go through and read those divided scriptures Revelation 12 a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the Sun with the moon under her feet and her and on her head a crown of 12 stars she is pregnant crying out with birth pains in agony to give birth then another sign appeared in heaven a great fiery red dragon that had seven heads and ten horns and seven royal crowns on its head and war broke out in heaven Michael against his angels Michael and his angels making war against the dragon and the dragon's tail sweeps away a third of the stars of heaven it hurled them to the earth the dragon and his angels fought but they were not strong enough and there was no longer any place for them in heaven and the great dragon was thrown down the ancient serpent called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him so here we can see the divisions already from the clarification that came later on in the chapter coming forward and adding on to the context so we can read the chronology a little bit more clearly and I know that John placed a curse on anyone who added to or took away from this book and that is not my goal I don't want to add or take away any of it I just want to rightly divide the word so that we can read it and that we can take as much truth out of it as possible let's keep going therefore rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them 
Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, the ones who accuses the one who accuses them before our God day and night has been thrown out. Woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great rage, knowing that his time is short. Now the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give child, so that whenever she gave birth, he might devour her child. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Now when the dragon saw that he had been thrown to the earth, he stalked the woman who had given birth to the male child. And from out of his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river after the woman in order to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the aid of the woman. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had spewed from its mouth. And her child was snatched away to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God so they might care of her for 1260 days. So the woman was given two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly away from the presence of the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is taken care of for a time, times, and half a time. So the dragon became enraged at the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commandment of God and hold the testimony of Yahushua. And he stood on the shore of the sea. Then I saw a beast rising out of the sea that had ten horns and seven heads. Now the beast that I saw was like a leopard, his feet like a bear and his mouth like a lion's. On his horns were ten royal crowns, and upon his head were slanderous names. The whole earth was amazed and followed the beast, and the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority, and they worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. One of his heads seemed to have been slain, but the fatal wound was healed. They also worshipped the beast, chanting, Who is like the beast, and who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth uttering great boasts and blasphemies. It was given authority to act for two months. Excuse me, for 42 months. And we know that's 1260 years, a time, times, and half a time, which means three and a half years. These are all time periods of the same time. So, what I want to look at before we get into Daniel is this place right here on the Ulai River and we can zoom out and see excuse the German map here it's the only one I could find that had Ulai, the Ulai River and the Elam province and remember Elam is going to be a place that's uh, mentioned here in Daniel 8. So the next map I want to look at is a map of the Persian Empire because Media Persia is who was getting ready to take over at the time that Daniel was uh, captive in Babylon. Alright, well, let's get into it. Daniel chapter 8 and this is divided and there's, I pray, nothing left out. It's just everything that is chronologically divided. Alright, and I, I encourage you not to use this as your main point of reference. Always read the word and read the scripture and then keep it side by side. Please don't take my word on it. Take his word. Daniel 8. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after the one that had appeared to me earlier. In the vision I saw myself in the citadel of Shushan, which is in the province of Elam. In the vision I saw that I was beside the Ulai Canal. 
Now it happened that while I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, behold, standing before me was one with the appearance of a man. Then I heard a human voice coming from between the banks of the Ulai, calling out, saying, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. He came near to where I was standing, and as he approached, I was terrified and fell on my face. While he was speaking to me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and stood me up and said, Behold, I am going to inform you about what will happen later in the time of wrath, for the vision pertains to the appointed time of the end. But he said to me, Son of man, understand that the vision pertains to the time of the end. All right, I encourage you to watch the earlier studies so that you can confirm we surely are in the time of the end. All right, I'll continue in Daniel 8. I lifted up my eyes and looked up. Behold, a ram with two horns was standing in front of the canal. The two horns were long, but one was longer than the other. But the longer one grew up last. I saw the ram charging toward the west and north and south. The ram that you saw with the two horns stands for the kings of Media and Persia. Now an no animal could stand against him. None could deliver from his hand. So he did as he, di as he pleased and magnified himself. While I was contemplating this, behold, a male goat came from the west, crossing the face of the whole earth without touching the ground. Now the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. The buck, the male goat, is the king of Greece, and the large horn between his eyes is the first king. He came up to the two-horned ram that I had seen beside, standing beside the canal and charged it with raging strength. I saw him attacking the ram furiously, striking the ram and shattering his two horns. Now the ram was not strong enough to stand against him, so he knocked the ram to the ground and trampled him. No one could rescue the ram from his power. The male goat became exceedingly great, but as soon as he became mighty, the large horn was broken, and in its place four prominent horns grew up toward the four winds of heaven. The four horns that replaced the one that was broken represents, represent four kingdoms that will arise from this nation, though not with its power. Now toward the end of their reign, when the measure of transgressions is complete, a stern-faced king, a master of intrigue, will arise. Out of one of them came forth a small horn, which grew extremely large to the south and to the east and toward the beautiful land. His power will be mighty, but it will not be by his strength alone. It grew as high as the host of heaven, and hurled some of the host and the stars down to earth and trampled them. He will cause extraordinary devastation and succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy both the people and the holy people. It set itself up to be as great as the prince of the host. He will even stand up against the prince of princes, yet he will be broken, but not by human hands. By his cunning he will cause deceit to prosper under his hand, and he will consider himself superior. It took away from him the daily offering, and the place of his sanctuary was thrown down. He will destroy many, taking them unaware. The host was given over along with a daily sacrifice in the course of its rebellion. It will hurl truth to the ground and prosper in what it does. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the one who was speaking, How long will the vision last, the daily sacrifice be forsaken because of rebellion, the sanctuary be surrendered, and the host be trampled? Then he said to me, For... 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be vindicated. Now the vision of the evenings and mornings that has been told to you is true, but seal up the vision for it concerns many days from now.
And rightly, it does concern many days from his time. But it concerns our time now. As we know from Ezekiel 36 and 37 that was fulfilled by the return of the Jewish blood, the Jewish people, to their native land of Israel. Yes, it was facilitated by all of these evil empires. And yes, Zionism has gotten associated with a, a very bad reputation because of those financially elite people. Israel is God's chosen people. And he has promised them an inheritance with him and his land. And he's extended that inheritance and that promise to all nations and to all people. And he's secured and assured that covenant with us by his own blood upon the cross. The Father, the Creator, the Architect of Existence placed Himself inside a man, flesh, body. The Creator did that for us. To show us that He loves us. So how can we treat each other with disrespect? We must love one another. Because our Lord loves us and our God loves us so much. He loves us so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. And He doesn't want anyone to lose that promise that He's purchased. Praise God for that promise. I pray that will be blessed continually throughout this week with success and our focus on Him. Father, in Yahushua's name, I pray, please be with all of us. Encourage us, inspire us, and lead us on your narrow path and keep our eyes and our ears focused on what's ahead and the path that you have laid before us. We praise you and we thank you so much for giving us your word. We pray that you will edify us and thank you so much for this community that we have. We pray that you will bless us all in Yahushua's name. Amen. So tomorrow we will be doing a live uh, Q&A series and we will be reading live some more scriptures. Uh, we'll be getting into more of Revelation and Daniel and getting into some clarification and some exploration on possibly what all this could be identified as today. And I welcome you to join us. Please join us tomorrow at 5 p.m. with Zen Garcia and myself, Justin Garcia. And we look forward to seeing you then. And please like and subscribe and email us any questions. If you don't have time to join us for the live recording, we will be posting it to the Facebook page and the YouTube page so you can always catch it later. So please send us your questions then. And good night and God bless you. In Yahushua's name, amen.